Hi, welcome to Blender Tutor. I'm Tom, and today we're gonna to create this cool abstract motion design animation using a simple method with the array modifier and animating with an empty. Let's get started. Make sure to clear out your scene. You could bring in a curve circle. I'm gonna scale that by two, and then I'll go into the curve properties. I'm gonna turn up the resolution up to 32. Under the extrude option, you could change that to 0.1. And that's pretty much all we're going to need our curve for. So now with the curve selected, go up to Object, Convert to Mesh. The next thing we're going to do is add a Solidify modifier. You could change the thickness of the Solidify modifier to 0.05, and then we could just apply that. Next, let's go down to the Normals and select Auto Smooth. So let's go ahead and apply scale by hitting Control A, going to Edit Mode. And I'm gonna add two edge loops around the outer faces, scale those down on the Z a little bit. And then with uh, face select mode, you can hit three on your keyboard or you could select it up here. I'm gonna select these faces. And I'll hit inset by hitting I on the keyboard. And without actually moving anything, left click outside of the selected space. And then under depth, we could change that to negative 0.05. So now we're gonna do one more thing. Let's select, uh, go into edge select mode by hitting two on the keyboard or selecting it up here. We'll select all of our um, outer edge loops. Uh, you can look at that in edit mode just to make sure, or in a wireframe mode, I mean. Once you have all those selected, hit control E, edge bevel weight, and turn that up to one. If you don't uh, pull it all the way when you're editing it in the first place, you could change it to one down here. And actually, if you hit N on your keyboard while in edit mode, you could even see it up here. So with any edge selected, you could uh, turn that, adjust that up here. Now we'll add the bevel modifier. Let's change the limit method to weight. And then let's change that down to like 0.005, something pretty small. And I might turn the segments up to like three or four. So the next thing we'll do is uh, bring in an empty into the middle of the scene. Go back to our circle and we're gonna apply a, an array modifier. And by default, that adds it next to it. We're actually gonna turn off relative offset and we're gonna turn on object offset. And then you can just select the empty as our offset. And basically, before I show you what that does, let's turn, let's turn this up to 12 and then select our empty. Now you can see the empty is what's offsetting this. So it is basically if we move it, rotate it or scale it, that is affecting our array modifier. So what we're gonna do is uh, scale it down on the X and Y, but not the Z. So if you hit S for scale and then Shift Z, you could just scale it down on those two axes. And you can just type in 0.95. I found that that number works pretty well. It won't be overlapping, but they'll be fairly close. And if this isn't looking like mine is, Make sure with the outer one selected, you hit Control A Scale. And now if we rotate this, you can see we're already getting the effect that we're gonna be looking for in the tutorial. Just scaling or rotating this on the uh, X axis. All right, so before we actually get into animating this, let's do the camera real quick, just cause it's easier and we'll get it over with. So uh, if you hit seven on your numpad, that'll bring us directly above our rings and you could hit Control Alt Zero. That'll bring the camera to our view here. And with the camera selected, let's just go into the location transform data and zero out the X and zero out the Y position. So now we're directly above this and we could actually adjust how high above it we are. Let's say about 15 should be good. Now we can get out of camera view. We'll go into side view, hitting three on the numpad, add in another curve circle and let's rotate that on the Y by 90, and then scale it up by 15, so that since the uh, since the camera is up on the Z axis by 15, by scaling up the ring up to 15, that will uh, line up with the camera. Before we do anything else, make sure to apply the rotation and scale of our curve. So uh, curve selected, Control A, scale and rotation. Now select your camera, the curve second, hit Control P and then parent to object. This way we'll be able to 
rotate the curve, and that will move our camera for us. If we're in camera view with the curve selected and rotate along the X, you can see what I'm talking about. You don't actually need a circle curve or anything like that to get this kind of movement. You could technically have just an empty in the center of the scene and parent the camera to it and rotate it and it'll still be a smooth uh, animation, but I find that this is just a more visual way to see where your camera is going to be moving. And the other nice thing about this is you could also animate the rotation and scale of the curve so that you can get a lot of sophisticated camera movement in a really easy manner. So for this animation, I'm going to make it 120 frames at 24 frames a second, which is five seconds. I've already set up my timeline to do that. So on frame one, we can select our curve, hit I, and we will add one for uh, rotation and scale, and then go to 120. Let's go to camera view and RX 90. But just to make it a little more interesting, I'm also gonna scale down the curve, which will bring us closer to our object. I'll just scale it down by points to 0.7. And then I'll add another keyframe, rotation scale. And now if we hit play on our timeline, we could see that animation. So um, that is the basics of the camera animation. Now let's actually animate our object. So in front mode, hit one on your numpad. I have the empty selected. I'm going to be using the, the rotation transforms in the uh, transform menu up here. Once again, hit N on your keyboard if that is hidden. So with the empty selected um, on the Y, I'm gonna type negative 12. And if I just do this, you could see what that's doing. It's just kind of rotating the empty, which is moving our array modifier object. So I found negative 12 worked for me. And then to add some variation, I'm also gonna rotate it along the Z. I'll do negative five for that. And then I'll just add a keyframe. Make sure before we do that, you are on the first frame of the timeline. So I'll hit I and that'll add a keyframe to all three of these. Now we could, uh, now we could go to frame 120, the end of our timeline. I'm going to change the Y to negative two and I'll change the Z to three, add another keyframe. And now we could see that animation. And if we add it all together, we already have this really cool looking animation, very simple. But we can do more with it. So we're gonna go up to the animation workspace up here. And first thing I'm gonna do is change this to the graph editor. And let's select our empty. And uh, depending on how much you know about animation, this might look scary to you, but I promise it is actually a very useful tool when you're animating things. Right now, by default, um, for me anyway, Blender is adding linear keyframes, which just means the speed of the animation from one keyframe to the next is a linear path. There's no variation. There's no like speed up or slow down. And you could actually change that in the preferences. So if you go up to preferences, edit preferences, go to animation and under F curves, you have default interpolation. I have that set to linear. I think by default, um, Blender might actually use Bezier. And that is, you know, maybe a preference. I find that it's easier to start out with linear and then add, uh, change the interpolation later in the graph editor. Anyway, back to this. Um, so we could just highlight with the empty selected, we could highlight um, all of our keyframes. You could go up to key, interpol interpolation mode, and then I'm gonna change it to Bezier. And now if we watch our animation, you could see it kind of speeds up and slows down at the beginning and end of the animation. Which might be something you want. I personally do not want that. So um, let's select the right keyframes over here and we could scale those, which is gonna actually affect the curves. But I, you could see right now it's scaling everything and I, I only want to be scaling um, the curve sideways. So if we, with these selected, if you hit S and then X, it will only scale along the X of this graph. And that is basically affecting, this line right here is the speed of the animation. So now the flatter it is, um, the less movement you're getting. So you could kind of see how it starts off very slow um, in, terms of the, in terms of the movement of the sphere. And then it speeds up a lot right here at these curves. 
And then it slows down again at the end. And I don't mind the slowdown at the end, but I do mind the slow start. So what I'm gonna do is actually scale these down on the X. And then I'm even gonna rotate, you could uh, select these individually and kind of rotate them so they just immediately start moving along the curve. So now you can see right from the first frame, it's already moving a lot. And it's kind of slowing down at the end. Now let's select our Bezier curve, or circle two, which is our um, rotation path for the camera. You can see this curve is really tall and it is kind of difficult to see right now. I could scale in and out with the middle mouse wheel, but if I hold down control on my keyboard and then move around with the middle mouse button, I could actually scale the size of this in the window. And what I will do is let's, check out down here is just kind of this is called the dope sheet and basically it's just going to show you all of your different keyframes anytime you see a, a solid uh, yellow or orange line like this that is going to mean that there's actually no animation the first and last keyframe are the same you can just go ahead and delete those so you don't have to have it all highlighted if you just click on the um, property on the left you could hit x and just fully delete it we don't need anything that isn't actually animating so right now you could see this is a linear keyframe just like we had on the other keyframes at first for the rotation on the X, that is the important one. So I'm going to, with these selected, I will also add a interpolation mode uh, Bezier curve to those. That's gonna do the same thing where it'll speed up and slow down. And I kind of want the same thing where with that first keyframe selected, I want to scale that down and I'm gonna rotate that so it's just immediately starting moving. And then this will, I'll scale that up a little bit on the X. And that's pretty cool. So now if we go out to our main layout view, play. Now you have a really cool, uh, satisfying animation right there. And that is the basic gist of this tutorial. I just wanted to go over some really simple animation techniques and how simple it is to get a cool looking animation just using the array modifier. But if you are interested, I will really quickly go over the scene setup in terms of lighting and materials. First, let's, I, I rendered this in cycles, so I'm gonna switch this over to cycles. And if you have a GPU, I would suggest you change that over. First thing I'm gonna do is go into color management and I always set this up to high contrast or very high contrast. Let's go ahead and add in an HDRI for lighting. So I will add an environment texture. So what we do is go into the shading tab. I'll go into rendered view and down here, let's select world. And right now you could see we just have our initial setup right here. I'm gonna actually duplicate this background node. So shift D and right now you could change the color to whatever brighten it up a little for now so we're going to need a mix shader node connect those and then we're going to bring in a light path node we'll use the is camera ray into the fact value and basically what that does is it allows our scene to be lit by the hdri but the um, output through the camera will be our other background node which is just a solid color you can tell this is a little dark, so I'm actually gonna bring up our HDRI value to about six. Now let's add in a material for our rings. So go back to object down here. I'll add in a new material. I'm gonna make it blue. This one is actually a really simple material. So for one, I'm gonna pick like a nice blue color. Um, specular, I'll leave that 0.5 for roughness. I'm gonna set this to Point one. And that's really all I'm gonna do. In my final render, I added some roughness maps to get some cool variation in the texture. And all that was, was a noise texture. Hit Control T. So I have my noise texture. I'll bring in a converter color ramp, add that into there. Let's go into the EV uh, preview mode and just hit Control Shift and then on the color ramp and we could see our basically output of this noise texture. Let's use UV and right now you could barely see anything. That's because um, it is so, the scale was so small on this. Starting at five, you could barely see anything. So I'm gonna bring this up to like 25. For detail, I'm gonna bring that up to like 15. 
roughness. I'm gonna bring that up a lot also, maybe like 0.85. And then really we're just gonna adjust the color ramp right here, kind of adjust the contrast of that and maybe change the white from fully white to like kind of a grayer color. All right, so now that we've uh, adjusted that, let's so hit control, shift, principal BSDF. And then let's plug in the color from our color ramp into the roughness. And you could see that we now have a roughness that you can adjust even more. And let's go look at that in cycles view now. And the other thing we're gonna do is change that background color. So now that we've selected a blue color, let's kind of just hovering over the blue, hit control C, then go to the world option. And then under the background for the white color, hovering over that, hit control V. That will basically copy paste the color directly onto it. Now we're in um, this mode, you could see the background has changed to blue. The other thing I did in my initial render is in this um, in indented area, go into face select mode and select this inner ring, go down to the material uh, node. Let's hit the plus sign to add a second material. I'll just call this metal and you could hit assign. So now you can see the inside of that is a separate material. For this one, I'm gonna do like kind of like a medium gray, turn up metallic all the way to one, and then the roughness will be 0.05, and you're gonna get a cool metallic material in there. So now let's go out to layout mode, and let's check that out. Cool. So I'm just gonna check out a quick render. Okay, so that is a quick preview of what our render looks like right now. I'm gonna play around a little more with the roughness, but first you could see it's, it's still looking a little boring. So the last thing I did to make this a little more interesting was I added in an icosphere, scale that down to the center, then in edit mode with everything selected, I'm gonna have the um, edge select selected. Hit control B for bevel, but then if you hit V, it's only gonna be beveling the vertices. So basically I'm gonna scale these up so everything looks about even and then hit X and delete those faces. And now we have um, this cool sphere with these holes in it. I'm gonna just hit Control 2 for a subsurf modifier. Let's shade smooth and I will add a solidify modifier to this and I'll also set the normals to auto smooth. Then we'll just add in a second echo sphere scale that down even smaller inside of it. We're gonna add a material to that inner ball. We'll change the surface to an emission. I'm gonna bring this up to like six and let's also add a uh, material to this other sphere. And I'm gonna just bring this up to like fully white for the color and then for the roughness, I'll do like 0.05 for that. And that's basically it. So now if we just go into rendered view again, you can see there's some light coming from within our sphere now. I might even brighten that even more. So it's at six right now, let's bring it up to 10. Yeah, we're getting a lot more lighting from inside now. And let's get to a point where we could actually see it. Let's look at that. Cool, so I'm gonna render this frame now. All right, so here's our render, but it's looking a little dull right now. So let's actually go into the compositing um, workspace. I'm gonna change this down here from the timeline to an image editor, give this a little more space. And then up here, I'll bring in a viewer node, turn off backdrop, and I'm gonna turn on the backdrop down here with viewer node. And I'll do two things. I'm gonna add in um, an RBG, RGB curves node first, and I'll just kind of play with that a little bit, add a little contrast. And then I'm going to add in a filter glare node, and I'm gonna change it from streaks to fog glow. Turn that up to nine for the size. And you could adjust the threshold or the mix, but I think the default setting looks pretty cool already. And uh, looking at this after it's kind of been tweaked with the colors and everything, you'll notice it's still a little dark, so the last thing I would do is maybe add in a few area lights. All right, the last thing we will do, let's watch this animation. And you can see right now, the sphere is a little static and a little boring looking. So let's just animate that really quick. Let's go to layout view, starting on the first frame. 
I'm just going to animate through this transform tab. So um, starting on the first frame, let's add in keyframe to all three of the rotation uh, at the last frame. I'll change Z to 120. For X, I'll do negative 90. Add in another set of keyframes. And now let's watch that. You have some cool animation on that. So let's just watch the whole animation now. And let's turn off everything else in our sequence. And let's turn this scene lighting and scene world. Cool. And yeah, that's about it. I'm going to render this out real quick and then um, I'll be right back. All right. And here is my final result. I think it turned out pretty well. I did tweak a few more settings before I rendered it out. I um, adjusted the roughness map a little bit. I adjusted the strength of the environment lighting. I, I turned it up a little more because it was still dark. Um, but that's about it. The only other thing I did was once I brought this into After Effects to export it, I added a vignette around the edges. I hope you found this interesting and I hope you learned something from it. I think this is a really um, useful technique. You could also use this to create some cool uh, animation with character to it. Here's an old animation I did earlier this year with this technique and um, I added some personality to it by adding some bounce and having it look around a little bit, kind of as if it were a sentient object, but I thought it looked kind of cool. Um, there's a lot you can do with this technique, so I suggest you just experiment a lot and, and have a good time with that. If you enjoyed these tutorials and want to check out some of my other work, you could find me on Instagram at thomaslatvies 3 d where you'll be able to find my newest art posts, experiments, and I usually post stories on Instagram anytime I post a new tutorial on YouTube. If you're already subscribed on YouTube and you're looking for other ways to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Depending on your membership level, you'll get early access to my tutorials, high resolution downloads of wallpapers and renders, and you'll also get downloads of the .blend files for these tutorials. But otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.